I am Atesh Sharma, senior editor at Home Crux magazine. We've been covering tiny houses for a decade and have interviewed many eminent personalities, including the likes of Tiny Mountain Houses CEO, Fritz Tiny Home CEO, Minimalist Aussie, Tiny Houses, and then we have all these guys, Rewild Homes, Wind River Tiny Homes, and all sort of people who are into this movement, who are manufacturers and who've been making and delivering tiny houses across the world. And it is indeed a great, great pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you very much for taking that. time to chat to us. So I'd get straight to the point because that's that's the prime reason why we are talking. We are here to talk about the tiny house movement. We're here to talk about the inception of movable roots, tiny homes, and the evolution of tiny house movement as a whole. So how and when did the journey of movable roots begin? Yeah, so uh, we started in um, early 2017. And uh, we had been in construction all our life. Uh, my father was a general contractor. Uh, so we grew up in the construction industry, building houses, remodeling houses, you know, for, from childhood, right? Uh, so as we got later uh, into our teenage years, our dad kind of went to work for a couple of larger um, home builders. Uh, so um, when I got out of high school, I already kind of had uh, a, a pretty solid construction base uh, background. So I went right into the construction field uh, right out of high school. Uh, shortly after that, um, you know, started my own uh, construction company and, and ran that until um, right around 2008, 2009, when we really kind of had a, a, a housing kind of market crash uh, here in, in, in the U.S., pretty significant um, we were doing all new construction housing at that time, and that pretty much halted in our area. And so we we took a, a step away from construction at that time, and um, you know did a few different things. But but you know always wanted to kind of get back into construction. Always knew that it was kind of our core competency and, and what we enjoy doing. And uh, so in about 2016, my wife and I you know, started to kind of have the idea of, 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 you know, following into the tiny house movement and kind of looking into it ourselves. Um, and, and that's where we kind of started to, uh, the idea for movable roots really came in because at that time, you know, we weren't seeing anybody that was building, you know, main floor master bedroom units, you know, everything was kind of smaller, uh, you know, 20, 24 feet. People you know, were no building one... more, people are building floor plan, which had lofts instead of main floor bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and we didn't, you know, if we were going to build one for ourselves, you know, we, we wanted a main floor master bedroom, right? And, and, you know, we also kind of, with our building background, we were kind of wondering, you know, well, why, you know, if I, if I only have, you know, six or seven feet of kitchen countertop space, you know, why aren't people putting in like really high end finishes into these, these units. And, and so we looked at it as, you know, this is what we would want in our home, you know, and it wasn't really, you know, super available at that time in the marketplace. Um, and so that was where, you know, we started. So we built our first unit, and we went to uh, a couple of tiny home events and just blew it out of the water. Like people were loving what they were seeing. You know, it was 34 feet long. It had a deck on the side. It had, you know, you know, be beautiful blue kind of bright cabinets with, you know, really high end quartz countertops and just all of these fit and features in it that, you know, we really kind of. Uh, conceptualized into the unit and 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 felt like we kind of had had a, an idea and, and what we also were seeing in the space from a personal aspect is we would kind of look for something and and ask about customization and nobody was really you know tackling that customization side you basically had about you know a company would have like maybe four or five models and and they would customize colors or they would customize little, little things in here but they wouldn't completely design something from the ground up for you so you know our kind of idea when we came into the space was let's go complete custom we'll give the customer carte blanche they can pick what they want they can uh you know uh depending on budget kind of you know make make whatever can happen within the restraints of, of the space. And that's kind of where we have kind of taken off in the space. So uh, again, we've been doing it almost seven years now and, and it's a family run business. You know, when we first started, it was just me and my, my brother. 
And then a couple of years in, we, we brought my wife on full time. She has a, a, a marketing and sales kind of background. So we brought her on about two years kind of into the business full time. And then last year, uh, we brought my son on as a, a, a full time uh, project manager. So he had a, a background in, 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 in project management in a different field. And uh, so it's just been a, a really neat kind of unique uh, organic growth kind of uh, that, that we've seen. So what? What challenges you had to face while the initial run of the company, especially how hard was it to get clients? Yeah, so, you know, there, there's a lot of like what I call speed bumps or roadblocks in the tiny home uh, space. So first one is placement, right? So, you know, there there's not a lot of places when we first started, you know, there weren't a lot of tiny home communities, so to speak. Um, RV parks weren't necessarily very fond of the ideas. Um, and so, you know, and we live in Florida where there's a lot of restrictions, right? Uh, you go out to more rural areas or more out West, they're a lot more, you know, kind of open to the ideas, but, you know, first off, we kind of, you know, we did, we, we hit quite a few, you know, roadblocks there and then financing, when we first started, there weren't any financing options at all. And, and, you know, we were building a fairly high end product that, that, you know, some people had the cash to buy and some others, you know, had some cash and needed to finance. So uh, in the very beginning, that was very limiting. So. What is it about movable routes that makes it different from other tiny house manufacturers across the globe? So I think it really boils down to kind of, one the 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 carte blanche customization option right like we we can literally you know design something from the ground up that fits your exact needs and when you when you think about conforming your life into under 400 square feet a lot of people really need that space to work for them and and what we found early on was you know if i do try to take a model and move a wall a couple of inches and, and try to make it like semi customizable, it affects everything else in the build. You know, now a different couch has to fit in there or the size refrigerator that we want doesn't necessarily fit without us moving something else. So everything has to be super precise, right? So, you know, I think that uh, separates us that we have that. I think our, our communication and the way that we treat our customers, we literally, you know, this is a very personal uh, purchase. You know, people are purchasing a home from us. They're they're having us build this unit for us. So you know, they become part of our family. We say in in this business, and 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 there's a lot of direct communication with the customer throughout the entire process. And and then even after the purchase is done, you, you know, we're here to to really make sure that that uh, you know the customer got the product that they wanted. But um, and then we we also you know have all kinds of different systems within our, our our build process we use construction build software that that you know a customer may be in california that's purchasing from us from florida and they have the ability to stay uh in the know with all of the you know goings on of the construction process through this construction software so you know we've got this kind of tech side of things that we we've brought into the space as well and and our our craftsmanship you know uh, unfortunately in photos it can be very difficult to you know, really tell a big difference in, in craftsmanship, but, you know, you can come and, and see what we do compared to, you know, maybe something else that you've seen. And there's, there, there is a, there, there's a huge difference in it. So, you know, I, I always use the auto industry as a, as a um, example, you know, you have, you have all kinds of different makes of cars, right? You have Hyundai who makes a car that gets you from point A to point B. And then you have Mercedes who makes another car that does the same thing, but there's just a big difference in quality. And I, I you know, like in our business and movable routes to that, that higher end kind of quality of service. So, One striking aspect about your tiny homes is the price of the micro dwellings that you offer. And I'm asking this question because you have some of the most expensive offerings in the market. Yeah. So again, that goes to kind of what we put into the unit. So, you know, we started off with a, a purpose built foundation trailer that has, you know, a full metal lining, you know, so it's, it's a trailer that's designed to have a home on it, right? So we're not just trying to take a, 
you know, a standard utility trailer or, or skimp on something within the trailer to cut costs, right? And then, you know, standard products for us are like closed cell insulation, you know, metal steel frames, you know, quartz countertops, full custom cabinetry. Like if you really kind of look at our builds and you look at, you know, the, the custom staircases and all of the different things that we do to try to really maximize all of the space, we're not just pulling, you know, cabinets, a uh, standard cabinet off of a shelf and trying to make it work. We're just really trying to maximize all that space. And with that comes a lot of time and, 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 and customization to make that happen. So, you know, we, we 100% know that our product line is not the cheapest option out there. Um, but ultimately, we feel like when a customer is investing in a movable roots home, that's going to last them a lifetime. You know, we're, we're putting in, you know, uh, standard for us are double pane insulated windows, you know, high end mini split systems, metal roofs, you know, all of these things are, are all standards in our product line where a lot of other builders will advertise a lower price because they're, they're putting in like a lower quality kind of product. They can, they can offer you the higher quality stuff, but they kind of reel you in with some of that lower pricing. And then, you know, if you are a customer that wants, you know, a, a quality trailer, metal frame, spray foam insulation, that price just starts to stack up, right? So when you, when you do compare apples to apples at the end of the day, you know, we just kind of put our pricing out there and we do get a lot of flack for it, but you know, it, it is what it is. We'd rather be upfront and, and we understand we're not the builder for everybody either, right? So. Mike, what's the total number of tiny houses that you have built so far? If you could just give us a rough idea. Yeah, so we're into the uh, 60th tiny home, so. And are you, are you just yeah. focused on US market or planning to go worldwide? So we do, we do have the ability to ship units out, you know, but that, you know, we have some talks with, you know, Bahamas, Puerto Rico, they're very kind of close to us uh, as far as and, and have a, a, a housing kind of need. Um, and, and the ability to kind of ship there is, is something that we have uh, the ability to do and have kind of worked out. Um, but again, that's 60 units that all, every one of them was custom made, right? So that's not, you know, we are not a high producing currently in our current setup uh, numbers wise, because we are, we're not rinse and repeating models, uh, you know, per se. So, you know, we do have a product line that's coming out that is going to be more of that, you know, minimal customization, but with our same quality um, that we think is going to be, you know, a, a higher producing model. What feedbacks do you generally receive from people who live in your built tiny homes? Any particular celebrity client who knocked on your doors? Yeah, so, you know, we have such a range of, of clientele. You know, we have the, you know, the young couple, the, the young millennials who, who maybe, you know, have that remote work kind of uh, uh, capabilities who, um, you know, didn't want to spend that $350,000, $400,000 on a standard 3-2 home. And they really just wanted the ability to, you know, maybe be mobile with their home and, and, and work wherever they want to work. So we have that clientele. And then we also have like the empty nesters, the retirees who sold their larger homes and, and, and want something smaller and, and to be able to kind of travel and, and, and spend time with family in different areas. So, you know, we... We have only had two customers resell their homes. And I, and I think that's because, and the feedback that we get from them is because we do spend the amount of time with them to design a space that works for how they live their life, right? So they're really just, you know, we're, we're, we're making a space fit for how they live their everyday life. They're, they're not trying to conform their life per se to the space, but more we're conforming the space to their life. So it is, you know, a lot easier for them to live in that environment when we've designed it for them. You know, Mike, when the tiny house movement actually started, it was sort of being called a minimalistic lifestyle and people were making homes and people were buying homes that made like 16 to 20 feet. But how do you predict the future of tiny homes from here onwards? Do you see the tiny house trending leaning towards park models or ADUs? So I definitely think the ADU market and the modular market is the future of the space. 
Um, and that's kind of where we are are shifting a little bit of our our focus. We're still, you know, we, we still have the 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 line of, of of complete customization for for those tiny homes on wheels where customers want to to be mobile and and have that capability. Um, but but going to that ADU market or that modular market where it's still a small uh, unit, you know, you're still designing on a, on a smaller kind of footprint idea, but placing it permanently on a foundation. So basically, it would be built here in our shop. It it transports to the site and then is set permanently. It opens up a lot more of the hurdles that we have with tiny homes on wheels. The speed bumps that we have with that. We don't or won't have as much with the modular side of things where, you know, you can get standard mortgage financing. You can you have a lot more options for placement because it's built to a building code standard. Right. So that 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 is, I believe, you know, with also the housing market kind of crisis as far as pricing, you know, reducing that amount of square feet and building something smaller that costs less it really does kind of open up that th those avenues. So uh, that is where we see the, the, the future of, of, you know, the, the tiny home space more into that, maybe not as mobile uh, idea, more kind of uh, set more permanent, but still in that smaller, tiny square footage. But that, that does defy the whole point of the movement. It was about traveling with your home. And now people are more into homes that are actually stationed at one place. Yeah, so I I, I don't, you know, the, the, the original idea for some, I do believe was the whole mobile kind of aspect. But in all reality, for a majority of our clients that do have the tiny homes on wheels, very minimal amount of those customers actually move their home. They actually, they like the idea that they can move it. But it really wouldn't matter to them if if they placed it because they've been in the same place for an extended period of time, right? So, you know, I think some of them went into the movable tiny homes because there weren't any tiny homes on a foundation as an option, right? So there weren't builders saying, you know, builders, like if you look at some of the, the big home builders, the big corporate home builders out there, no one, none of them are building anything under a thousand square feet, right? They're going in and building these huge subdivisions and, and they're, and they're, you know, building larger, you know, 1500 plus square foot, you know, units that are costing, you know, upwards of that, you know, minimum three fifty four hundred thousand price point, right? Where if you look at, at the U S housing market back in the, you know, fifties, sixties and seventies, the average square footage of a house for a three, two was a thousand square feet. Right. So I think what, what, what I see and what we see of the the, the movement of the space is that whole like downsizing that minimalistic lifestyle and, 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 and bringing that square footage down into that sub thousand square feet into a three, two, that's very functional. And we bring all of the, the, you know, space saving ideas and the customization of the cabinetry and we bring all of that into that space and we're able to even you know squeeze that square footage even more right and and really make it a a, a useful and, and and very uh a unique kind of floor plan idea and your company has got a pretty interesting name it's called movable roots how did you decide sit and decide that we're going to go with this name and we're going to market this name yeah, so, you know, it was really a lot of kind of thoughts of, of you know, what we wanted the idea to be. And we, and we really feel like it, it will still encompass even when we get into that modular space because it's still initially moving, right? So, you know, and then we're placing the roots, right? And putting it on a foundation. So, you know, the, the idea for us is, you know, one, movable means mobile on wheels. You can move it around. And then roots meaning, you know, Really, you know how you you know you set some roots. They say, you know, let's buy a house. Let's set some roots somewhere, right? So, so those two words together kind of really encompass what we wanted to do in the space. Whether the unit is on wheels and and it's moving, it's still your home. It's still your roots, right? Or if it's on a foundation, it's really more rooted into into uh, more of a permanent space. So we really feel like our name really encompasses what we you know want to do in the space. 
before this interview, I was doing a bit of talking about you, and I found that you used to be a firefighter. You used to work as a paramedic. Tell us about that I, aspect of your life. I still am. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to to, to have an, a, an amazing career. I just finished uh, 26 years with uh, my local fire department, and and I'm a, a lieutenant paramedic with with that department. And you know, having a family run business, you know. Uh, has really allowed me to, you know, continue to have that that job and have other people within the business really kind of wear different hats and 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 you know kind of as as a, as a community you know get the business where we are today. But so how do you manage uh, these two? How do you manage these two roles during the day? You're at your service, you're paying your services to the government, and by at night you're working for movable routes. How does it work? It's it's all about the team that you build around you, right? So you know when I'm not here, when I'm when I'm you know got my fireman hat on, there's people here that that take on the roles that that uh, that that they need to to, to fill the to fill the holes, right? And a lot of that's been in the beginning. It was very very difficult, but you know again having having uh, my wife come on and and now my son over the last year who's really taken a lot of things on the production side of things off of our off of my plate. Um, you know, I'm really able to kind of focus on, you know, the, the, the forward movement of the business and some of these other avenues that we want to explore. So it's really more of a team effort, 100 percent than it is really, uh, you know, how I how I'm able to, to do it. So. So, Mike, what are your future plans? I mean, when can we expect next tiny home from movable routes? Yeah, so, you know, we've still got we've got a lot of things kind of happening in the tiny home on wheel space, we, we still have a lot of customization projects in the works. We have quite a few commercial projects on wheels. We know that's another avenue that people have sought us because of that customization and being able to build something that kind of fits their brand. Um, you know, so whether that be a, a mobile food truck or, you know, a mobile office or, or, or something that just kind of fits their specific needs. And then, you know, our, 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 what we see as a, as a main kind of production line for us uh, is this ADU modular space. And, and we just actually activated those on our, on our, our website. We've been going through uh, some processes with the state of Florida to become you know, approved for being a modular builder and getting our plans approved. So we have the ability, we have a, a couple of models. We have a, a one bedroom, one bath model, and we have a two bedroom, two bath model that will be, uh, uh, that we're taking orders on for, for the 2024 build year. Um, and then we also even, you know, to keep that, that customization option, we've even partnered with a, a modular architect to be able to, you know, still offer that carte blanche uh, option for a modular uh, custom uh, home for those that really just want it how they want it. So what has been your favorite build so far and what any specific dream project that you have in your mind? Um, <clears throat> special, like most favorite project. I would like, I, I would say the first home that we built, the, the Henderson, and, and I think for, for a couple of reasons, one, for the most part, that was really my brother and I working together on, on that unit and, and really just, uh, you know, early on, you know, building our brand around that unit, making sure that all of our craftsmanship looked, you know, as good as we wanted it and all of the parts kind of fit. So there was a, a really good you know, bond in, in that, in that process, working with my brother on that. And, and it was named after our older brother who we unfortunately, you know, lost, uh, you know, in that, that 2008, 2009 timeframe. Um, so, you know, that, that build for sure kind of, uh, you know, holds a special place in my heart. So you build that um, home for a client or you build that home for yourself? So we built it as a spec home and and ended up selling it. We took it to like three or four different home shows. We won a couple of home shows. We won like best in show at like two different home shows. And then we went out to Dallas, uh, Texas for a home show and sold it there to a customer. So, you know, it was it, it was something that we used to, you know, uh, show off our capabilities. And, and it, it kind of ran like wildfire when we put up, you know, professional photos and marketing of it and everything. So it was something at that time that there weren't a lot of people doing in the space. So 
All right, Mike, it has been really a pleasure to have you with Home Crux today, and I've really cherished this conversation. And uh, as soon as I pen this article and this article goes live, I definitely send it to you. And I'm not aware if you are sure, if you are aware of the fact that we at Home Crux have been covering every single one of your tiny homes, whether it be the Henderson tiny house or it be the war tiny house or the park models that you have been that you have put on your website. We have been covering every single one of them. And we intend yeah, we, to more in future. We we definitely appreciate it. We knew that we had been, you know, we had had, you know, our homes featured on on your site, but but we hadn't had a a, a kind of one on one. So we're 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 excited about this, and and we appreciate the time and and the offer to do this. All right, thank you, Mike. It was really a pleasure to have you with Home Crux today.